Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. It's called Minimalism in the Making and my name is Kelly and it is Saturday the 22nd of October. Um, I am in Seattle and um, it's finally raining as of yesterday for the first time in a really long time and so um, I am happy about that. It's been really, really dry and really, really smoky and um, we've needed a really like good cleansing rain. So um, that's what it's doing right now. Um, yeah, I've got a bunch of um, October stitching stuff. This is a channel mainly about cross stitch and um, that's what it's going to be today strictly only cross stitch um oh no that's a lie um yeah that's a lie because i have um some halloween crochet just some amigurumi little um cutesy decorative halloween crochet stuff but i'll do that at the end um so anyway it feels like a long time since i've done this it always does um, it's always, I don't know, several weeks, sometimes a month or two between videos. And I always wish I could be more consistent, but for whatever reason, I'm not. Boyd is probably going to go to sleep at some point in my lap. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff around me within arm's reach. And, um, so let's get started. I... Like the last week of September, I started um, getting really excited about stitching Halloween stuff. So I um, got out, I think of my last video, which was sometime in September, I showed kind of like my plans for October stitching and Halloween stitching. And um, I actually followed through on a lot of those plans, but not all of them. So. I, I'll just go through, like, Halloween stuff. So, things that I finished, well, it's kind of a mix. So, here is um, Smell My Feet, which is a freebie from, um, uh, La Dida. I think I don't have the uh, I don't have the pattern anymore with me but I think that's I think that's what it's from um, and it was really fun to stitch I tuned into Helen D's um, one of one of Helen D's last few videos where she finished this and she had um, done some fun colors or maybe she didn't stitch it and she was finishing it for somebody else but either way whatever version of this that she showed as a finish had um, different colors in the stockings and on the pattern it's just a solid green called for so I got inspired and threw some extra colors in there and I did some I just broke up the border randomly with the colors the green and purple and orange that I used and I think it's pretty cute. Um, I also put like a little, I wanted it to look like there was a hole that got patched up on the stocking. Um, someone commented that it looks a little bit like a spider. So it could be either. I just thought it was cute. You know what? I didn't put I swear, like 50% of the time I finish something and then I notice when I'm showing it that I missed something. I could go back and add the little string. So the spider like web that is hanging down, I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a little string web kind of hanging off of that um, tea and treat that the spider's coming down on. Um, so I will go back and add that. I backed it with some black homespun cute 
fabric and it's just pretty basic pretty simple little pillow finish um yeah so that is that one and next this was a previous finish i did this little witch from the prairie schooler heads up book i did the witch last year but it was just kind of sitting in um the package oh and sorry i have a really gross blood blister on my hand so sorry about that um anyway so i took this out and just i just wanted to put it on something and buttons i like to add buttons whenever i can i don't love this finish now that i've done it but i have an idea to make it better um i just need to see if it works and it's going to involve stitching two more of, of these like halloween related um heads from heads up but i think it'll be really cute um when it's done so i'll show that when i do it whenever i do it even if it's not like halloween time um and I did this in the called for colors, um, which is super dark brown and orange. Okay, um, I did a little, this is from Boo, what's it called? I have it here. Boo, Boo Moon by the Prairie Schooler. And um, so I did this one. I did change um, the yeah, the moon is supposed to be the orange that's in the bats. I think the bats eyes, but I just wanted to make it yellow. I'll probably dunk this. I dunked this one in, this was the same Ada and I just dunked it in some leftover coffee from the coffee pot. Um, so I'll probably, I might do that to this too. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. This is the first one that I've completed from that book. So I'll probably hold on to it until I do some more and see how I want to finish all of them. Um, but anyway, I've got that out for now because it's cute for Halloween. This is another previous finish. It's from the Prairie Schooler. I think the booklet is um, called Country Wise. It's the one that has this and um, keep it simple, plan ahead. There's like four patterns in it. It's also got the stitching sampler thing, the quilting one that says measure, measure twice, cut once, I think. Um, but this is cute. So I, I ha obviously have not fully finished it yet, but I just pulled it out um, for Halloween. This one I did do just recently, and it is, um, look how little it is, like, okay. I keep flashing my blister, sorry. But I mean, look, it's like, it's like a finger tall. It's just tiny, teeny tiny. This is from um, Pinker and Pumpkin, Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting blog, uh, Melissa Vanders, or something um, she does the cutest little freebie cross stitch patterns and she's got a bunch of really cute stuff for Halloween um, so anyway I did this one and I got this little frame a while back at a thrift store and it's just it was the perfect size so I've got that set out for Halloween here's another past um, finish this was Okay, I'm really disappointed in myself for not realizing when I fully finished this that, that this was not like at the very top. It's kind of, it's kind of um, tilted. And so I can't fix it now because the lace is like, it's all finished in there. It's not glued, but I don't wanna pull it off because I think I'll mess up the lace. Anyway. So I don't hang this because I think if I hung it from here, it would be like 
a little bit tilted the wrong way, so I just set it on a shelf. But this is a freebie from, I think, the Little Stitcher um, blog, and it's called Vintage Witch. And I, I love this. This is still, like, my favorite Halloween finish um, so far. I haven't stitched um, until this year, until this season right now. This was my only, like, real, actual Halloween cross-stitch finish. So I got a bunch more charts this year to do because I wanted some more Halloween. But I still love this a lot. One chart that I got um, this year was this button-eyed cat from the Scarlet House, and I stitched it, and I finished it in a little pillow with some of the same homespun fabric that I used on Smell My Feet. Um, I, I think I was just so excited. Well, okay, so this one has where you can either do actual buttons for the eyes or it also is um, charted to like have stitched eyes if you want but I always if I can add a button to something I I always will and so I um, found in my button box stash I found um, these wooden button or these this um, pair of wooden buttons for the eyes and I got really excited about them because I think they're really cute and I think I was just too excited to finish this because I forgot to put the whiskers on like I totally forgot to put those red whiskers in so I still have um this is tomato from the gentle art and so I just need to, I don't love it in a pillow, so if I have to take it out of this pillow to finish it, I will, but I think I can just like put my needle in like really shallow, like not straight into the stuffing, but um, I think I can get the whiskers in okay after the fact. So I need to do that because it's definitely missing those and I don't know how I missed that. Um, but anyway, this is cute. I'm really glad that I did I I, on purpose, didn't do this border. Um, these are some kind of eyelet, like specialty stitch that I haven't done yet. And so I kind of just didn't, I got too excited when I found the eyes and I just didn't want to do that border. Um, if I end up taking this out to put the whiskers in, like taking the finish off, or not off, but like, undoing the pillow. I might go back and add those. I don't know. I don't know. But it's cute without them. Um, so I need to finish that. Um, another one that I got this year is candy corn and pumpkin. from Stitches by Ethel. And I think this is really cute. I got this at um, Threadneedle Street and I stitched it with all of the called for threads. I, um, I think it's really cute and it was a really fun stitch. And I didn't realize this at the time that I got the pattern, but she does this like mouse and crow combo or raven or whatever it is um, in different seasons. So I saw there's a holiday, there's like a Christmas one with Christmas gifts around them. I don't have any of her other ones, but um, this could be a series. Um, I just think it's really cute and I like the little quilty stars in it. So I finished it and then I found this frame that I think is a 5 by 7 in my stash of thrifted frames and it fits well. It, I didn't lace it, um, it probably, it's kind of wrinkly in there and isn't stretched very tight, but um, 
it's fine with me. It doesn't have glass on it, and it's a stand-up frame, so I just have it sitting um, in my kitchen window, and it's really cute. The other one that I got at Thread Needle Street this year to add to my Halloween co collection is Wickety from the Cricut Collection. And um, I just thought this witch was so cute. And she's got tons of colors. Um, I don't know, like 20 colors or something. Or I'm not going to count them. But there's a lot of colors in here. And ha about half of them are, and they're DMC, about half of them are called for that I used. And the, uh, the other half are basically like whatever was closest to called for on, I used the DMC um, app that you just put in the color that you're missing and it'll tell you which colors are closest to it. So um, it's mostly called for and then like anything that's not called for is really close to called for. So this is, and I did it on some thrift store um, Ada, which was not labeled. It was just a big piece that I found somewhere. Um, so I don't know what color it is. It looks like 14 count to me. I didn't really measure it, but um, this will be really cute when it gets all ironed. And um, I think I'm gonna do like a little, cause it's so big. Um, like a little wall hanging soft finish like a quilted with binding around the edges i think it's really cute look at the frog and the little pumpkin bucket and her shoes it's really cute it was a ton of color changes and a lot of detail and i think it's really i think it's really fun so that's that one. And I also did my um, October horses, monthly horses from Little Fox Stitching. So um, I'm, I've started November and um, actually I've got November right here so I really want to get this next one finished up it's not quite done the borders take a long time but they're worth it because they're really cute um, they really like set off the pieces but I need to get that done it's the 22nd so I've got about a week ish and um, then I'll put that in here these are just velcroed on my little barn house thing and another one I pulled that's a previous finish is the um, black um, blackbird spell of the moon is what this one is and I finished it on this book is falling apart because it's like 90 years old and I got it at a yard sale, like out of a free box at a yard sale. But it just looks really cool with this piece and all the um, antique buttons that I sewed on. I really like it. So I just stand this up in my kitchen window. Um, I've probably talked about this before, but I have one of those kitchen windows that has like the, the, the big, it like is a bump out with windows. It's like a little mini greenhouse kind of thing, but it's got a big surface in it to set stuff. So there's like a glass shelf halfway up, like in the window that I put a bunch of plants in, little little plants. And then on the bottom, um, it's just stuff like this for the season, just little decor stuff that I change out. So I put that in there and it's cute for the kitchen. This says all about baking. Dirty, dirty and old. Um, then, let's see. So, that might be it for this year for Halloween. I have a little bit of um, 
Yeah. You know, the two that I talked about, um, there were two other ones that I talked about starting that I didn't get to. And one is this, which it's really cute. Um, I used to have a subscription to Readly and I printed this from that, but the, the chart, like it just didn't show up very well. So I still have it. Like I've, I've got the whole thing but I don't know if I could really even stitch from it um, but I really like this so I'm just I might do it next year and if I don't do it next year I probably just won't do it but I'm holding on to it for now I don't think so um, I, I stitched Halloween stuff pretty pretty hardcore um, was really feeling it for like four weeks and it's kind of tapering off now and I'm happy with what I've got done um, I'm gonna fully finish a couple things like put, put the whiskers on that cat and then um, fully finish my wickety witch and get those up um, at least that's what I hope to do in the next week or so um, but I probably won't start any more Halloween because I'm just not feeling that um, Halloween-y enough anymore to start new stuff. Um, I just want to enjoy what I've gotten done, but I'll hold on to this for next year. There was another one that I don't have a photo of, but it was, it's a really cute um, frame. It's like a um, gilded frame around a haunted house. It's a really simple, it's called Framed Fright if you want to look for it on just cross stitch magazine from 2020 um, I don't know who it's by but um, that was the same thing it just didn't I don't really have like a good um, a good chart for it I just have like the image not the image but I don't know what I'm trying to say again it was from Readly so I didn't really get like a good chart from it um, I just saw it and liked it, so I might try to find that at some point if I really want to start it, but it won't be this year, probably. Um, my coffee is getting cold. I didn't take a shower this morning, but I put in earrings, and I kind of feel like sometimes that's just as good. Um... The other thing, I wanted to show this. So Colleen from Stitching with the Sisterlies made this. And um, I think the Sisterlies, the Kogut fabric, is so cute. It's a little needle book. And she put a little scrap um, of fabric to tie it. And it's just really cute. This fabric is really cute. And it's got like felt pages to hold needles and I took all the needles I actually took all the needles that I had put in here out to do like most of my Halloween projects and and it's got like she did such a nice job on the details there's little pockets in the sides um, and she quilted it it's really cute so anyway, I need to unkit all those Halloween projects that I did and put the needles back in here and get this out again next year. Um, yeah, so that's it for Halloween stitching. Um, I kitted a sampler up. Um, that I had found at a thrift store. I found the chart at a thrift store. It's a blackbird design. It might be out of print. It's called Evening Shades the Garden. And I thought it was really cute. I like the flowers and I really like the border. It's kind of checkered. Um, and it doesn't have very many colors. And so I kitted it up at Thread Needle Street with some Oh, I don't know what color this is. 
You know what? I think it's I think it's antique white linen with I think it's all of the called for except we were missing one. I think we were missing one of the reds or pinks. Um, and so we got um, old red paint from Gentle Art to go to go with everything. But I think the rest of these are all called, called for colors for it. So I kitted it up kind of like in September for sampler September, but then, oh my gosh, I'm so bad at this, but then didn't start it. I feel like I can't cover up my face because I have to see what I'm doing by looking at the screen. Anyway, <laughs> the fabric's lighter than what's called for, but there, I, there was no way. I couldn't find what was called for, and I don't have really a fabric stash to speak of. What is that called for? Fog Lifter by r, r Reproductions is the fabric. This one is lighter, but I, I kind of like it. I don't know. I could always dunk it in some tea or something, just like really briefly um, to get it a little bit more yellow. But with that yellow house and this, this, like kind of golden color for the house. I kind of don't want to tea stain it because I, I feel like this might not show up as well. So I think I'll just do it lighter. Anyway, so I might start that um, soon just because I have everything for it and I just didn't get to it. Um, all the like sampler September and whatever else there is, like I don't, I'm not like a, die hard um doing all the things person but i also want to do all the things at least in spirit like whether i get to it or not i might like make plans around it just because i i just feel included i guess like i'm including myself even if i don't like post anything for that it's just in my mind i'm doing it um so that one was there. The, I guess, um, I guess I'll talk about um, my whips. Okay, let's do that. So whips, um, what I've been working on, there's a few things that I have been working on that I'm not going to show because I don't have them here with me like easily and Boyd is asleep on my lap now and I don't want to get up but there's like a project in my bag that I take around with me when I'm out and about um, that I work on here and there and then there's some of my older whips that I'll grab sometimes just because it's convenient but I got this um, a while back and I was just kind of feeling like toadstooly like in a toadstooly mood and I the kit has everything in it, including the perforated paper. I have started one Mill Hill kit, ornament kit ever. It's the only Mill, Mill Hill thing that I've ever started. And I've not, on that one, it's one of the Christmas ornaments and I haven't like gotten to the beads or anything. I'm not even sure. I was talking to my friend Jill about this. I'm not even sure like if you're supposed to do the like all of the cross stitch with the colored threads and then go back and add the beads on top, either with the same colored thread or invisible thread, or if you're supposed to just like where there's a bead, like not do any thread stitching on that square, but just do the bead. I'm not even sure about that. Um, and I don't think, I don't think it's said in the instructions specifically. I don't know, I haven't opened this one yet, so I'll check for that, but um, yeah, I don't know, but it looks really cute, and 
I kind of want to start it and do it. Um, I also, I'll probably do it on the perforated paper, but I also have this cute little, I picked this little um, hoop up at a yard, no, at a thrift store. It was like 10 cents and I had this little scrap of green fabric. So I might also do it on the green fabric. Either or also, Either, yeah, I don't know which. Um, I think it would look cute on that. So I've got that that I can start. I just said I was gonna talk about whips. I know I'm talking about, I just showed like two kitted projects. Okay, let's just, let's take a pause and I will shift to actual whips, I think. And I'll just go through, yeah. Okay, let me back up. So whips. I have a bunch, I've been doing a seven day rotation and um, I, that's going really well because I'm getting to work on stuff that I usually forget about. Oldest whip, which right now is the tiny modernist um, folk calendar that was in the 2021 just cross stitch uh, or cross stitcher magazine um, and so those look like this and there's 12 one for every month and I've done January February March April and now I'm working on May so I'm going in order of the calendar not in order of what month I'm in right now. So here is, I've got, like I said, all those finished through April. So there's May, April, and I'm working on May right now. And I just keep, I'm gonna keep going on this. The whole series I'm counting as my oldest whip right now. So I'm just gonna go through, cause they're so tiny. Um, I'm doing these two over two on 28 count Monaco, white Monaco. I'm just gonna do those um, until they're all done as my oldest whip. So that's on Mondays. And then on Tuesdays, I've got the closest finish. So right now, my, what I was considering my closest finish is the monthly horses current month that I'm in. So this is the closest finish. So I'll do this on Tuesday and then maybe, maybe one more Tuesday um, because this border is gonna take, um, I only have, you know, whatever time I have in the morning to stitch. And so I can't just do it until it's done. I have to, you know, start my day so I just get however much time I have in the morning. Um, so I'm thinking two more sessions. There's not much in, in the middle left, but the border takes a while. So then on Wednesdays, I said, um, I do my light in the dark and that is I'm gonna show you the actual picture of it. It's um, from Heaven and Earth Designs and the artwork is by Matt Stewart. And it looks like this, it's the mini version. And I'm doing it on, I believe 25 count easy grid. And doing it on that fabric the finish will be 11 by 13 inches. And I had this printed at a print shop. And what I have done is, cause I like, I don't have any digital, I don't have like pattern keep or anything, but I've been putting these stickers on each square when I finish them cause I don't like to highlight and this, they printed it on really nice kind of glossy paper. And so I don't think highlighter would work anyway, but I don't, I'm not interested in highlighting. 
um, especially for that. But this is where I'm at. And I cleaned up my threads a little bit. So these, these guys are parked. And then this, this one is, I'm working with right now. But this is a couple of pages, almost a third page, I think. Or maybe it's one page and almost a second page. So it's gonna be it's gonna be this big. It's gonna be like the full size of this. So I'm making good progress. Doing it once a week, working on it once a week, no matter what, is like great. It's great. And it's critical if I'm gonna see it done in the next year or so too. Um Okay, so Thursday has been a seasonal stitch, and um, I pretty much was working on like this mostly on those days to get that done. And so um, this week I'm gonna put in uh, some other seasonal stitch, and I don't know what that's gonna be yet. Um, oh, you know what? So this. After I got Wickedy done, I actually put this one into the seasonal slot. So I, I got to work on this like one or two days. I um, This is really cute pattern. And I what I think, I'm, I don't think I want to put this um, October 31st in it. I want to just take this bird and put it somewhere on the tree maybe. Um, wherever it makes sense and then um, just not have this but I chose some really cool fabric that Jody had given me and um, that she wasn't gonna use and it's so hard to see um, and I'm, I'm I still I'm gonna do it on this it's just really slow going my eyes are like getting worse every day I, it feels like but, and also I started with the, I started with the tree and this color is probably gonna, you know, be the worst color on this, just like to see. Cause this color I'm working with right now is like the exact color almost that's in, of the orangey that's in the fabric, but it's kind of like the highlight on the um, tree branches. I'm just trying to fall off my lap. Um, hey, okay, we'll go get it. All right, okay. Yeah, so anyway, it's really hard to see. Like, I can't even, it's hard to even see the stitches. But I'm gonna hang in there and keep doing it as long as I'm just, and I stitch, first thing in the mornings and I get up early to stitch and so this time of year it's dark outside and um, at that time and I natural light is best for like stitches that are hard to see but I have a lamp with a daylight bulb in it and I um, wear my glasses and it's like I can kind of do it but it's something about that fabric color and the thread color is just really hard so um, that might get rotated out um, since my like Halloween stitchy vibes are kind of like slowing down now, that might just get, um, there's no way I'm gonna finish that for this Halloween, so I might just rotate it out and work on it next year when I start feeling Halloween-y again. So Thursday, um, that was Thursday, so then Fridays, um, oh, I've been working on this one on Fridays. So that's why Friday's kind of a wild card because it was going to be like a another like smaller full coverage but I've been working on um, plague doctor and it's just the black version and I really love it it is on you know what I have to find it 
Oh, no. I've got it right here. I'm going to tell you what I'm stitching it on because I really love that colored fabric. It's um, dark cobblestone, 32 count Logana, one thread over one. And I'm using just anchor black on a spool on Etsy. Busby Designs is where I got it as a PDF. Okay. So that is, buddy, you gotta get up here. He's totally falling into the crack and is going to end up on the floor. Um, that was Friday. So Saturday is sampler stitching and I've been stitching on oops, this one, which is Nature's Peace by Carriage House Samplings. It's really cute. Okay, so I... See how that's bare? Okay, so see how the bare right here has like those blank, like those white ones are not stitched. So it's like a space between its leg it's like the back crown coming between its two front legs. For some reason, that was just bugging me. And I wanted to fill that space at least a little bit. And I just was like, I, it just seemed to me like that leg was looking too skinny. And so, you know when you like cut your bangs and it's not even, so you cut more bangs. And then it's not even, so then you have to cut more bangs. And then it's not quite even so you have to cut more bangs and then you don't have any bangs you just have like that's what happened with this bear I just kept adding more stitches it was like the opposite it was getting bigger so now this bear I have to I made a note in my notes for this to not count anything off of the bear because the bear is Bear, this is why the bear looks like a beach ball now because it's just like very plump. I added, I just kept adding a, a little bit more and a little bit more to like even it out, to even out like what I did. And then I just had to like, I had to restrict myself from the bear and just call the bear done. Call it a day on the bear. The bear is what it is. It's um, the plump bear but it's over, it's over now for the bear and I'm moving on to the other animals and it's gonna be great when it's done, when there are several other animals in there. It'll draw a little bit away from the way that I ruined the bear. Um, okay, Saturday and then Sunday. So Sunday was either Pinker and Pumpkin were Prairie Schooler and I actually have been doing these two for Prairie Schooler because this is like it was this season and I was feeling I was feeling these two so I've been kind of going back and forth um I might still I did this scarecrow and then like I want it and then I noticed this scarecrow I don't know it might be too like late for scarecrows out of the season but I really like I really like this one um I might for like November stitching do like an owl that owl up in the corner is really cool and this owl so I don't know I might do one of those first like um my prairie school or Sunday or or I might do like a turkey thing for um I don't know for pink arm pumpkin quilt saying she's got so many cute seasonals little little quick easy and really cute seasonal stitches on there so anyway that's Sunday it's kind of a I call my mom in the morning and have my coffee and we chat and I stitch so it's whatever I feel like on that day okay so that's my whips for like my rotation for the week which I'm I'm really I'm really liking I think it's working really well I'm getting a lot of progress on stuff I love I love knowing that I'm working on my oldest whip 
every like one day every week because it's just gonna it's like once that one's done my next oldest whip is gonna go into that slot and then my next oldest whip and it's gonna be um I think it's gonna be great to just it's basically a sure way to not have any old whip languishing or forgotten or in the back of the stack all the time um, so I really like that and I also really like doing um, knowing that I have like a full day not a full day but like a full stitching day of the week like for stitching time on this because it's I already am seeing so much more progress on that um, yeah so I still have a ton of whips um, that aren't in the rotation, but I'm also finishing stuff um, pretty regularly, so it's all it's all good. Um, I have I do have November plans, so we're like I said, we're coming to the end of November, October. It's October twenty second today, and I'm feeling like really I'm like coming out of the mood of starting new Halloween stuff and into the mood of like fully finishing what I've done and, and getting it up and decorating with it. Um, I've kind of dedicated that little, like, maybe I'll put a picture. I don't know. I may or may not put a picture in uh, of it, but my kitchen window with the, the big surface, it's like a maybe like two feet or two and a half feet wide well maybe three like kitchen windows typically can be like three feet right and then it, it bumps out like 18 inches so I have this like surface in front of my kitchen sink with um, a window but that surface I've kind of dedicated to just like fully little seasonal um, like cluttered it's it's like the one space that's just like I can put whatever for the season in there and I just like throw it in and like pile it up and it's like a totally Halloween threw up in there and that's fine because it's gonna it's gonna come out and something else is gonna go in so like that doesn't make me itch or anything I actually really like it um, I can't do my whole house like that. I would get hives or something. Like, the rest of the house needs to be, like, fairly plain-ish or, like, kind of minimal. But that space, it's, like, all the little tiny cross stitches I just can throw in there and all the little decor and stuff. Um, I went to a yard sale, um yesterday there's this place in my neighborhood that has they have um it's this huge house and they have a yard sale all the time it's like once a month or once every two months they'll put out their signs and it's the same place and I finally caught on to like this is a thing they do it's a fundraiser I don't even know or I remember seeing at one point like what the fundraiser was and and whatever it was it was fine for me personally but I can't remember what it was but um, yeah anyway I've got a terrible memory but this place has so it's not just this whoever lives at the house it's not just their stuff it's like stuff from whatever organization like people bring stuff it's just a ton of stuff I don't know where they start they must like dedicate their whole like garage to just storing the stuff because they pull the same stuff out like every six or eight weeks and do it again and do some more and it's um I just found so much and and they pri it's like right it's like old school garage sale pricing like everything's 25 cents or something it's just um yeah and if you buy a bunch of little things and they're just like don't want to add it up because it's too much they're just like here like okay give, give me five dollars and just take all all the stuff that's in your arms um so I it's nice people and I'm like now I recognize the signs and I go there whenever they have it just to look and see what I can see and they um 
I've just found like a bunch of little like seasonal decor kind of things that I'm like throwing in the windowsill and I'm just like it's fun like like that's my in my own mind like that's my free pass to have like a little space of like totally over the top cluttered up like seasonal explosion for that small space and I they've I don't know I found I'll show some stuff um, that I've gotten when it's um, when it's when it's out for that time um, I didn't get any Halloween stuff there but I've got some like Christmassy stuff um, that I'll pull out and show anyway so um, I did just over water one of the plants that's on the top shelf and it like spilled down so I had to pull everything out and like clean that up and so if I get it back together today I'll take a picture of it and put it in here if I don't it just means that I didn't get to it but um, okay so November cross stitching plans include that on November 1st I want to start I have to cut my fabric still but um, I want to start this for um, the Day of the Dead. This is called Memento Mori. It's by Satsuma Street. And I love, I love it. I love all of these colors on this black. And I got black. I think I got whatever it's called for. So it's um, Swigart. Oh, 14 count Ada in black. So I have to cut it down. But, um, yeah. So I do want to start that on November 1st and work on it for as long as I feel like working on it. Um, and I've got some colors pulled. I need to pull, pull a few more, but it's all DMC. Um, so that's my plan for November 1st. Um, these two that I already showed were supposed to be for plans, so I might start this in November, and I might start the Blackbird Sampler in November. Um, this one I picked up at um, Threadneedle Street, and it is Harvest House. And I just really think it's so cute and it's little. It is 89 by 49, but I have another one of these too and I think it's the spring one, but I was gonna do, like not do the trellis. Um, so I might just do like this little section of fence to kind of match this side and then maybe just do like a couple sunflowers coming up or maybe just this one I don't know whatever or maybe maybe just I don't know I don't know I just think it's really cute and I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna want to do that part um, I think it would be cute to figure out the stitch count to just make it square. So whatever this is, 49, to see if, if I can just do 49 across and have a little square. So I might start that. This is all DMC as well. I haven't pulled any colors or grabbed fabric, but I think I've got a lot of little fabric scraps that would probably work just fine. Um, I've got a couple other freebies. This one is Thank Wool by Stone Street Stitchworks. Thank Wool. That's what it's called. And it's a cross-stitch turkey that looks like it's wool. Just the way that the patterns are, it kind of resembles wool. And I think it's really cute. I don't think I would put the give thanks there um it's just really cute i think it's supposed to be a needle book 
So I might do that if I'm feeling like just stitching a turkey. That's a maybe. The other one is this, um, it's free chart from the Market 2020 cookbook and it's like the little squirrel with a pie. I thought that was really cute and it would be cute in my kitchen window. So I might do that one. That's just a little guy. Um, it's 40 by 40, it looks like. And then if I am feeling like doing a turkey, actually, I might do this one. I kind of like just the plainness of that. I don't know. Or if I do that other turkey and I don't put the give things, maybe I'll put that little like acorn and leaf in there where the words are. Um, this is just, you know, if I'm feeling like a turkey, I've got some options. There's a chart that I want to order. I think it's on Kitten Stitcher and I can't remember what it's called. Um, and Jody and uh, Jody has it and she showed it to me and that's where I got the idea. Um, but I want to do something that says National Day of Mourning for Thanksgiving. Um, okay, I found it. So it is called The Curse of the Raven by Carriage House Samplings. And I think I might order that today. I'm not a big shopper. I try to keep it minimal, but... I think I want to do this in November. Um, other plans. I got um, the woodpecker from A Year in the Woods. I'm not doing the whole series, but there's um, a couple I like. I like the eagle that I have and then I like this one. This one feels like fall to me and I might if I'm feeling if I'm feeling it I might start it. I've got a couple colors. I even have a needle and I've got some ice blue linen. Oh yeah this was gonna be I was thinking wouldn't it be pretty on the blue? I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I haven't decided. What do you think? But the trees are definitely fall colors in the chart. And so, I don't know. I like it. I might try it on the blue. I'm still not like super confident in changing fabric colors drastically. I'm just like not sure about that but anyway so those are November um, plans additionally my one other thing that I do want to do is here it is I want to do the December oh I can show the whole thing I want to do the December um, monthly horses for my little my my little display. I want to do get that done in November so I can display it for for December. I've been doing pretty well getting those done in a timely manner. Um, yeah, so that's it for November plans. Um, and so that's. That's actually, oh, you know what? I was gonna say like who I watched. I finally got smart and looked back at my history on, well, on YouTube. Um, because I, it was really hard to, I didn't watch a whole lot over the summer and then I started watching more floss tubes like so hard to keep up because there's so many good ones and um there's just so much out there but I did look back at my history so for the last week I've seen or not even the last week probably a couple weeks I've seen Amy Loves Toads um 
I love her. She's doing this shark full coverage that is just like, it's so cool. She does a bunch of full coverage. Um, Crafty Cottage Stitches, and um, they're, I've been crocheting. I'm going to show that stuff in a minute, but they're getting into crochet too, and it's um, fun to see what they're doing. Stitch and Mommy, um, Sarah from Stitch and Mommy, she did a re like a three hour whip parade and she I just was like mesmerized because she, her not only does she have a ton I mean she's she's not into the triple digits but she's like close which she she might have more than anybody I've watched personally that I've seen um and I just think it's amazing and the other thing is her the majority of her projects are like huge full coverages, like big. They're all big, pro not all, but most of them are big projects, like really big projects. Um, so that's like super fun to watch. Um, I've been watching the Vintage Stitcher already, um, Lost in Flaws. Lala D stitches. Lala D stitches actually it kind of inspired me to like revise my rotation. Um and she's like here in Seattle somewhere or near out maybe outside of Seattle. I don't know. She might be like far away from me, but um she's in the area. Anyway, she has a weekly rotation too. And hers is different than mine, but um I think that's I think after I watched the show where she talked about it, um, about hers, that's where I like did the days of the week and it's been working out really well. Okay. I was really interrupted by a herd of tiny dogs stampeding into the living room and barking. Okay. So that's who I've been watching lately. Um, I just knew floss tubes keep popping up in my feed and I'm there's just a lot to watch and um and I love it because I that's where I get that's where I see things that I don't that I didn't know existed so that's my favorite part of floss, floss tube is just seeing what people are doing um seeing what's out there that I didn't know about um getting inspired that kind of stuff um, okay, so that's it for stitching. If that's all you want, then it's, then that's done. And I will see you next time. And thank you so much for stopping by. Really, really, really appreciate it. And, um, if you want to see some crochet, then, um, let's talk about that. Oh, and one like little tidbit that's not either of those is I got this cute glass pumpkin from my friends who came to visit from Pennsylvania and we went to the Pike Place Market because um, they they had never been to Seattle and like that's one of the things they wanted to do and in the market I was just like oh, look at that cute little glass pumpkin and it's got a black stem and I just was like really excited about this and so they went back and bought it for me or they didn't go back but they just like went kind of behind my back and got it for me and gave it to me and it's so cute and it's with it looks so cute with this it's so cute I have another glass pumpkin with a green stem it's an orange pumpkin with a, with like a traditional orange with green um that I bring out for like no, uh, November time fall time well, this is fall time, but it's like more, I just use it for November because it doesn't say Halloween to me. This one, because it has a black stem, which I never would think of like a pumpkin with a black stem. This is like, it's so cute and it just says Halloween to me because of the black stem. Anyway, so I have that in the windowsill with my stuff. Now, so for crochet, there was a year, and I think it was 2012, so I have a blog that I don't post on. I haven't posted on it for years, but it's on my list of things that I want to do is to like get back to it and start posting again, because I used to love to post crochet stuff and crafty stuff on there, 
and um, I went back and a parent, I, so I have all these cute um, Halloween crochet amigurumi things like, like this little candy corn with a face and I did a whole bunch of little, like a whole bowl. Okay, that's gross. There's a hair. Um, these little candy corns and I filled a whole bowl with them. This is a little, um, I think it's a fire king. Yeah. Yep. It's a little fire king dish that I found at, um, a yard sale, but I just put those in there and those are really cute. And I have all these little crochet amigurumi things that I did for whatever reason, fall 2012, I just put a ton of cute little tiny simple crochet amigurumi um halloween themed stuff on my blog and um it's all like it's all free patterns because like they're my original patterns but they're like so basic and so easy that it's like it's it almost doesn't count as a pattern which is why it's always um which is why i always put it on for free because it's nothing like that it's nothing special that hasn't you know some iteration of it hasn't been done already a million times it was just my version of it um so i'm gonna this is my favorite okay gross blood blister this is my favorite one it's so cute it's like a little square guy Frankenstein guy. I love how big his eyes are. Anyway, so this pattern is on there for free. Um, it's from 2012. So the name of my blog is Turtle Weenies. It's all one word. I'll put it in the description box below, but it's um, turtleweenies.com and it is just a blog, but this is from 2012. All of this stuff is from 2012. On the side of the blog are little thumbnail pictures of all the patterns you can click on and hopefully it all still works. I mean, this is like a super old blog. I'm not technically savvy at all. Um, so links might not work and I, I don't know, but I'm gonna get black. I'm gonna get back to the blog and like start doing it again because I really liked it and I can put cute stuff like this on there and I'll put, you know, what I'm doing for cross stitch, but, um, taking pictures is fun and writing little blurbs is fun. And I just kind of want to get back to doing that. So this is on there. If you want to, it's so easy. It's such an easy one to do. If you want to make a little Frankenstein head, I didn't do the body because I'm just not that that would have been so much more involved. But I will show you. So at that yard sale that I was just talking about, I got this bottle, this old brown bottle, and I took a limb off of our dogwood in the yard and I hung. So I made these little ornaments this one, it's not the same. Um, this Frankenstein is better and it's got the little bolts on the side. Whoa. But um, this was like a little practice guy. But anyway, I've got a little jack-o'-lantern, this witch's hat. I, I, I don't know if I, honestly, I can't remember if all these were patterns I put. I just made them up as I went. And so like the kind of squiggliness of this hat don't know if I wrote down like how I did that because I just kind of like was watching a movie and crocheting as I went okay this is very imbalanced and it's spinning but it's a little tombstone and a little spider with big eyes and lots of little eight legs my ghost fell off but anyway so this is like my cute little crocheted um, Halloween tree stick limb 
Um. Okay, so that's it for my little crochet thing. I'm going to do, um, after I film this, I'm going to get into, I'm finally going to do like another minimalism, crafty minimalism video, and I'm going to just completely just do my yarn. I'm going to like go through my stash, go through my whips of knitting and crocheting. Like I'm going to get rid of half of it somehow. And I think I've figured out how, but that's like a totally separate video. So if you're interested in um, like paring down your crafty room or stash or anything, I'm going to do just a yarn video on that. Um, and I'm hoping to do that today. I might change my shirt so it looks like a different day, but maybe I won't. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll take a shower and then it'll be like a totally different, whole different like feel to it. I don't know. Or I'll look exactly like this. I don't know. We'll see. But I also made this little turtle from it's from a magazine. I'll show you which one it is in a minute. I think you can still order it because um, it's like a it's like a um, special publication of one of the crochet magazines where it's like the gift edition where it has a bunch of cute little crochet gifty things in it. Um, but this is um, a baby tortoise from the magazine and I made it for a birthday for a three-year-old that I know that um, just had a birthday so I need to take that to her Ooh, got a little tail I made up the tail um, so I did the shell this is in cotton yarn and I did the head and I got them all put together so then I just needed to do the feet and I couldn't remember if the pattern had a tail or not but I know turtles have tiny little tails um, and this is how lazy I am sometimes. So I was upstairs, needed to do the feet, wanted to do the tail. I didn't have the pattern or the magazine upstairs. It was downstairs and I was too lazy to walk downstairs and get it. So I just made up feet. I mean, it's not like they're hard, you know, I've done a lot of feet, but I don't know. I don't even know now. Like I haven't even looked at the pattern again to see if like anything was different on it. I just did four feet and a little tail and sewed them on and called it a day. So, it is very cute. I didn't name it, she can name it. But I would, there's a mom tortoise too. I'll grab the magazine so you can see it. Okay. This is it. It's from It's a crochet today publication. So you can go to crochettoday.com and look for this. It's called um, the Crochet Gift List, our best collection of toys, dolls, and gifts. And it's got a bunch of stuff in it. And here is actually the entire Oh, here's the, here's the tiny tortoise that I did. Different colors, obviously. I've made other stuff in here. I think I showed this um, on my minimalism video. Cute stuff. Okay, that's it. That's all I got. Um, Hopefully I will get some of my November plans done and then I'll be able to show them to you on the next video. So people are waking up in the house. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for subscribing. Um, let me know 
what you think about the blue fabric on the You're in the Woods woodpecker. I'm hesitant, but I think it might be really pretty with the fall colors and the fall um, trees in the background. I don't know. Anyway, um, I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye. I forgot. It's me. I'm back. I forgot to show one little finish. Look at this. This is a pink ground pumpkin quilting blog free sunflower. It's the sunflower sampler. And her pattern has the alphabet, but I did not do the alphabet. I just did the sunflower and I think it's so cute. And there's detail in the center. The center of the flower is two different colors. And I just put it in this little thrift store frame that is just so tiny and cute. I love it. And don't forget, idle hands are in fact the devil's workshop. Bye.